Good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, the judge there uh, with the old American hat. You've guessed it, folks. It's Breeders' Cup Classic Day, and this is the only preview that you need for the big race tonight, 10.40. So don't be going heavy on those Jager bombs this afternoon while you're watching Weatherby. And I'm talking to you as well, judge. We need everybody awake for 10.40. So I've set my alarm for 10.35. I like to watch him go in the stalls. So I will be watching. What a great race. I'm going to take you through the prices and I'm going to bring the judge on. And he's going to get verdicts on the race. Got a couple of big price outsiders to have a look at and then a selection. And then I will tell you what my selection for... What many say, I think the Arc de Triomphe is, but I've got to be honest, what many say, Judge, is the world's biggest flat race. It's the Breeders' Cup Classic. It's on at 10.40 UK time. Arabian Night is the favourite, but is drifting. Three to one. You can get now with Billy Hills and Coral Leisure. Now, that was extraordinary for a horse. It was best price nine to four on Wednesday. So three to one. On the favourite, the Arabian Night. Then we get the Japanese Raider, Ushbata Soro. I won't tell you who's riding that. Judge can tell you that. Best price, 4-1. <laughs> to <one laughs> Spoil sports, a bit early for me. White Abario. Now, here's the thing, Judge. Fans of, of Holden Sources, this YouTube channel, I say fans as though there's more than one, will remember the early days, the glory days of the channel, when uh, I, I popularised and championed a little-known uh, jockey, Irad Ortiz Jr. And here he is from three years later on the third favourite in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And he's contacted me to say that he feels a lot of this is... No, he hasn't. He doesn't even know him. However, it's great to see Irad Ortiz making the big time. He's great. And he says... He wants to ride at Ascot next year, Judge, so we'll get a chance to have a photo with him or be asked to leave by security. One of the two. I know it's probably heavily odds on the latter. So, Irad Ortiz is on the third favourite white of Barrio. Then we got the Saudi crown at eights. Bright future at tens. And we go all the way down in this big field. Uh, non-runner, Archangelo is a non-runner. And miss the cut. For all you golf fans, is the outsider of the pot at 66 to 1. So, Judge, what do you think of the makeup of the race? I know you've got a couple of big price outsiders for us to keep an eye on. And what is your selection? Yeah, it's a, it's a good race, actually. Normally, you've got quite a shorty in, these, in this, this race. And, um, I mean, last year, we, we, we were sport sport by the winner actually bowling that, weren't we? Well, um, awesome. And it was uh, short, short odds. But so this is a very open race. And... Uh, Personally, I'd, I'd make it bigger than three to one the field. I think it's, it should be like nine to two the field. It's that it's that kind of um, open. And the, look, the, the favourites um, is unexposed with just the four four runs um, Arabian Night. Um, just just for me, I think it's got a little bit to prove in this company, and uh, I'm quite happy to take him on at that particular price. Um, there's normally a lot of pace in this race, and I can only find the two front runners, and that was Saudi Crown and Arabian Night. So he might get an easy lead. Um, I doubt it if Saudi Crown's um, going to be chasing him. And it, to me, I just think he's going to be worth taking on at the front. Totally respect, and it is going to be my selection, um, the Yuga-ridden um, Ushba Tesoro. I can't mm. be... I, I love these Japanese horses. They just um, they just seem to just keep running and running. Um, mm. He was such an impressive winner at the Dubai World Cup meeting. Um, I think he deserves to be the favourite myself. I mean, seven from eight, I think, on, the, on, his, on his turf, sorry, turf on his dirt starts. Um, he deserves to be favourite. Um, it's been a long time since he's, um, since he's, well, I say a long time, long time since that Dubai race, but he had a nice little prep run, which he won. Um, these Japanese also are beginning to be, to be bet, and I do think the actual, um, the other Japanese horse at a big price is also worth a little look at, uh, Derma Sotogaki. Um, this horse was fancy for the Kentucky Derby and run very well in it, actually, for a, and a shocking um, trip all the way round. Went round the outside. And he's available at sort of 25, 33 to 1 out there. 30 to 1, I think. He's a big price. Um, and the other couple of big price ones, I do think Proxy's a big price. Because we're going to come to your selection in a minute. I think it's your selection anyway. Proxy, um, he's chased own bright future. And he just got beaten by him. And also, your, your other, you know, I think, is it, is it your one? No, no, I'm getting muddled up with White, White um, Barrio. He chased mm. White Abario home. He's, he's only a, a four to one chance, and he wasn't far behind him. And he's a twenty to one chance. Um, he was fifth in the Pegasus, and, White, and he actually beat White Abario in that. And uh, 
you know, the difference between them two, uh, sort, of, sort of 20 to 1 and 4 to 1, seems to be too much to me. So for me, they're, 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 they're the sort of two outsiders I think could actually t- sort of win the race. But I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's, there's a, a big outsider hitting the frame in a race like this. Here is it nearly every year, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, when we look at last year as a, as a betting proposition it was a not it was a non-event as a spectacle to see that uh, one of the great all-time horses this is there's no well there may be a superstar see that's unfair however there's no horse that's like leagues clear of the others this is going to be a competitive race uh one outsider that caught my eye judge is uh senior buscadon i love the old todd finch horses now this is available at 50 to 1 this is a a horse that kind of five-year-old goes to every dance. He's capable of running the odd stinker. And to get that clear, if you're going to do it. But if you look at this horse's wins, he's produced, you know, some incredible yeah. speed figures on his day. Now, I don't think he can be 50 to 1 in any horse race. So I'm going to have a few quid on the old Senor Buscador. Uh, uh, now, if you're going to join me, folks, be perfectly aware. This horse can throw in some shockers. Yeah. But yeah. when he's good, he's very, very, very good. And at 50 to 1, it's classic leap of faith material, this, uh, on a good night. And I'm sure that the, the great man will have him primed. However, you do, you do, I do think, think this is they one... They want them to go fast, Si, don't they? You, they want them to go fast for that, that to run well. I think, I think he's... I think oh, he's yeah, 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 that's for sure. yeah, 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 he's overpriced. And he's, he, if... Well, come to why I think he, he could be one of those pick-up-the-pieces horses, couldn't he? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, the, eh, now, uh, Arabian Crown... Um, where am I not Arabian Crown? Arabian right. Night, get it right. Yeah, I'm mixing the front two, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bob Baffert horse, you know, the old sponsored by Boots, the chemist, the old Bob Baffert, the old joke they say that, don't they? <laughs> he is, uh, uh, now let's get this into, into perspective. He trains this favorite. This has been the buzz horse all year for the Breeders' Cup. Uh, as I say, it was top price nine to four, which was very, very uh, skinny midweek. A couple of the uh, firms, and I think on the exchanges, people will try and get this beat. So I think if you fancy that, I'd hold fire. I think could see it going out to seven to two. Um, he trains this, Bob Baffert. Arabian, uh, sorry, get it right. Saudi Crown, I'm mixing these two up right. Saudi Crown, Crown is trained by Brad Cox. Between them, Judge, they have won five of the last nine Breeders' Cups. When you think of the competitive nature of this race, that is an extraordinary stat that these two yards keep producing horses that can win this race. So it's, you know, it's the bleeding obvious. These two know what's needed. And I just think at the prices, this Saudi crown at eight to one with four places available is quite exceptional. Now, Saudi Cram last seen winning a grade one. Now, what impressed me is it made all, I think it was the Philadelphia Derby, made all. One horse came at it late out of the pack and he repelled it and went away again at the end. So this is a tough competitor. Now, there's no way that this is not going to lead. Uh, Florent Giroux, the jockey, last time out, absolutely stormed out and got the rail. And I just wonder if this Arabian night is ever going to be pushed like it is tonight by by Saudi Crown. And we'll see how tough this favourite is, because one thing for sure is if they hit that one pole, this thing is going to keep going. Now, it may well be that Arabian Knight is the superstar in the field and he can get by it. But what we got here in Saudi Crown is a trainer who knows how to win this race. He's targeted this all year. He's given it a good break. I think it's going to like really, really set some incredible fractions early and we'll see how good arabian night is tonight i could see where the pair of them you know storm clear and if they take each other on and slit each other's throats then you need a uh i probably shouldn't use that image with a saudi name if they oh, yeah. if they go too fast and you know do each other in then it may well be that we, we you need to do some pick up the pieces horses however these are very very experienced jockeys and i'm sure they're not going to go suicidal pace but I think at the at the prices, Judge. I mean, let's go three six five. They got nine to four Arabian Nights, Saudi Crown eight to one, and we got four places. I just cannot see how you can not if you want one of the front two. I just can't see how you can't do the eight to one each way because you know if he places, you've you've virtually got your 
your similar price to betting the favourite. If you bet this favourite, he, he has to win. Or, or you've done your dough. You've got two chances with that. We've got the proven grade one winning form. We know it's a late ball front runner. And we've seen that when a horse comes to it and challenges it, he can repel it. So I, I think this is a, an unbelievable each way play at eight to one. And I'd be very surprised, Judge, if this isn't the mover and, and doesn't maybe go off 11 to two. And I, I think that a few of the big layers will try and get this favourite. Now, taking on Bob, Bob, Bob Baffert could, you know, has been a costly thing for bookmakers. Easy for me to say. So I, I just think eight, eight to one is a cracking price. Now, the only thing I'd say about a Japanese horse, I mean, it, it brings here incredible form, but I just think on their travels, some of these Japanese horses, now that might be changing, but they've often not done it on the world stage, have they? The amount of times they've come over to no, Europe or had a last, in. last year's breeders didn't they? They did, they did okay at the last year. They did very well, obviously, at the Dubai Festival. Um, yeah, yeah, Dubai yeah. Festival, that. But Maybe it's I, changing. I, know, I see where you're coming from. I yeah. just think, I think he should be favourite, you know, he's winning seven out of eight group. And I, I've got this feeling these two that you're on about might hook up and he'd be the one sitting in third ready to pounce. He would get the first bite, bite at them. Um, yeah. He, he definitely will be staying on. Um, I, I expect him to be there or thereabouts. Um, but like for punting wise, you, I'd definitely be looking at the outsiders to try to nick, nick the frame. Um, the other Japanese also, I'd definitely be having a couple of quid on him. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd be, you know, I'd be surprised he's a three-year-old as well. You know, these three-year-olds have got quite a good record in this race. So he's, he's overpriced at, you know, 25 to one as well. Um, but it's a type of race. You can you can have a couple of darts on the outsiders and have a win bet at the front. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you're, you're playing it a different way and going each way that, you know, your one, which is, I, I think at the price, I'd rather back that yours at eight to one than that, the, the favourite at three, put it that way. Yeah, so folks, it's Saudi crown for me at eight to one each way. I would take that eight. Uh, and I, I'm going to have a few quid on Senor Buscador at 50 to 1 as an outsider. Judge likes the Japanese horse Ushbar to Sarah. And your outsider to watch, Judge, is the other Japanese horse, Derma Sotagaka. Yeah, that's the one. There you see. Uh, I got the hardest one right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be a great day. Have you got some more bets, Judge, for your uh, loyal punters? Yes, I have a I've decided to play a little bit more cagey today, just with the English racing being so, you know, with the going everywhere. It's just, it's got to be unraceable at certain places, nearly, isn't it? Well, I can uh, tell you off air, folks, that I've got a, telling the judge, I've got a pal who lives very, very near. I know you're surprised that I actually have a friend, Judge, but I have a pal who lives <laughs> at Weatherby the other one. from the track. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes two now. So he told me on Thursday there was no way Weatherby would race. He'd driven by the course. I was just telling the judge then. So I knew on Thursday uh, his own garden completely waterlogged. He then messaged me on Friday morning. They've had more rain. So just be careful. Now, I, I did say to the judge, he was very, very surprised this morning when he sent me the message. It's on. I'm pleased it's on. And I'm pleased that my gaff Ascot is on. But if you see that one on heavy ground in the form, then you need to give it two ticks, I would say, to, uh, today. So great days racing. And then we all settle down for this at 10.40. So go easy on those Jaeger bombs, judge. And... Remember, if you're walking down to your local bet, Fred, I would get changed first. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to also say it's our birthday, mate. It's been two years. I think I thought we had our very first uh, Breeders' Cup was our very first show. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in our uh, like to say it's gone quickly. And we yeah, made it yeah, well. exactly. Two years. Wouldn't it be great to celebrate our birthday? by winning the classic. And as I always say, George, if mine doesn't win, I hope yours does, but I want mine to win loads more than yours. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And I'll let Judge say it on his own. It's our second birthday. Thanks for all your kind comments and all, and some of the abuse, the softer one. And uh, we will try and be here for a little while yet, if not two more years. So, uh, Judge, over to you, mate. Be lucky. <laughs>